Mm. Is the board visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, clearly visible. Okay, yes, sir. You. Totally visible. So, uh, you know, last time we said that in classical mechanics for different uh, problems, we can use different coordinates, uh, different uh, frames of reference, like some problems are easier to solve by using the rectangular coordinates, and some problems are easier by using spherical coordinates. So last time we solved the problem of quantum harmonic oscillator in the X basis. Now, let us try to attempt the problem of quantum harmonic oscillator uh, in energy basis and uh, see what is good that we get out of it, right? So, uh, the harmonic oscillator quantum oscillator in energy basis. We want to solve the problem of quantum oscillator by taking it from the energy point of view uh, and expressing finally its Hamiltonian in energy basis. In the meantime, we will get some, something very interesting. Uh, some very useful tool we will get from them. Sometimes this method is also called the algebraic method, right? Uh, for example, the Hamiltonian for harmonic oscillator, we know that it is equal to half and omega square, x squared. I, I would like it capital X, not small x, just to emphasize that it is an operator and not a variable. And plus p squared divided by 2m, right? If we want to take 2m constant, right, we can write it like this. So that will be m squared omega squared x squared plus p squared, right? Then another theorem will become this thing. That is the number two. Now look. We can split it into two factors. You know, if you recall your algebra, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b and to a minus b. And if it is in total like uh, plus bump, so we can split it in uh, two factors in which inside one term will be real and the other term will be in Italy. And what will be the context of the conjugate of the other? Right. So, like you have p square plus b square. So you, you can write it like it. A plus iota b and a minus iota. So, if we want to split this like this, and then I take the problem. What is the situation? Can you do it? Can you split the Hamiltonian in two factors? Right? Like we can say that can we do this? Uh, is equal to or not equal to what? What do we do? M, right? And m square omega square x square, right? Plus i p. Remember these p and x are operators, not variables, right? M square, omega square, x square, minus i, right? If this is true or not, generally it will not be, you know, in quantum mechanics, it may or may not be true, right? Because x and p are operators, 
So when we multiply these two with each other, one will be xp, one term will be xp, the other term will be px. Excuse me, xp is not equal to px. Therefore, this term is not like true. Let us just uh, find a little bit different, bit similar but slightly different, right? If we consider uh, an operator of this form, we suppose an operator A of this form, right? M omega by two H cut. One over two x plus i one over two n omega h cut to the power one over two n t t. Right? This one is this one is equation number one, and this is two. Right? Let the other operator a dagger is equal to m omega by 2 h cut to the power of 2 x and minus i, where i is iota, the imaginary number, 1 over 2 m omega h cut to the power of 1 over 2 and t. Let us see if we supposed one factor like this and another factor like this, instead of these two, instead of this factor and this factor. We suppose two factors like this. One factor is this one, and like one factor is. Okay. So what happens, right? You can check one thing. You can check one thing. Let the commutator of A and a dagger this is equal to one. Commutator of A and a dagger, if A is this and a dagger is this, you can check that this will be equal to one. So it means that A a dagger is not equal to A dagger. Which means that uh, the A A dagger, the product of these two operators, this is not uh, commuted to, right? And since these are made of uh, X and B, so these are Hermitian operators because X and B are Hermitian operators, right? So let this is the question number four. We we can we will use this, right? Let us see, you know, we said we, get, we will get the Hamiltonian from the product of the two factors. In principle, like if it was a normal algebra, this A and N dagger should be giving you the Hamiltonian, right? But since it's not a normal algebra, this is quantum mechanics, this is not even. So let us find out what is the relationship between A and A dagger and and relation between a a dagger and h. If the Hamiltonian is not uh, very plainly equal to the product of these two factors, then what is its relation? <clears throat> Let us find out. Right. So a dagger into a will be 
be equal to right m omega by two x cut the power of root two minus i and x minus i right one over two m omega x cut the power of one over two and p right and the other thing m omega over two x cut Power one over two plus i, right? And one over two m omega x to power one over two and two p. Right? So from the product here, we get m. Omega by two and cut n two is here plus one over two and cut x p i right minus one over two and cut in x into i i plus one over two and omega and cut n two is the what we get from here we get this from here right. Okay. By further simplification, we can come one over x cut omega will be equal to m omega squared by two and x squared plus p squared divided by two m and plus the imaginary part plus i over two x cut and two and So we get a behavior into a in this form, right? B is like this. R got this equal to that is equal to the Hamiltonian of the very first. That is the Hamiltonian, right? So the Hamiltonian. Divided by x cut omega plus i over two h cut, and what is x and p? They have the, the commutator of x and p. Uh, do does anybody remember? Aftab. <coughs> yes, sir. This uh, is uh, h over two phi. It is, this is h over two phi. <laughs> So it is I, I yes. h cut. Right? I h cut. That is the temperature of x n. So that is equal to h over h cut omega, right? And minus one over two. So A is equal is equal to this thing, right? It is the relationship between the two factors and the Hamiltonian, where omega is the frequency and h is the constant. Right now, we can write the the Hamiltonian from here. Right, well, h will be equal to right? a dagger into a minus one over two. Right. Sorry, not one or two, and two extra two. Right? Now this is the relationship between a and dagger. You know, we use this. We will use this relation in pro in solving problems. Right? We can put instead of h Hamiltonian if the Hamiltonian operates on a function. On a kit, then we can put for that uh, Hamiltonian. If it is a harmonic oscillator, we can put a a dagger plus one over two into h cut omega. We are going to find out very interesting role for a a dagger. The operator a, and we will see that the operator a dagger has very interesting role, right? And that makes this, uh, the the problem of uh, quantum harmonic oscillator 
very interesting okay let us simplify this a little further right let us make it like from here make it like unit this kind of normalized so x let us x cap is equal to x cap is equal to x or x and omega and that would be equal to a bigger a plus four plus two right so uh, x cap is equal to a dagger a plus one over two and that is seven h cape remember h cape will be counted in the units of h cut omega because we have divided h the hamiltonian by h cut omega therefore whatever value we get from here that will be in the units of h cut omega so we should remember this okay Let us remember another relationship that we are going to use, right? The commutator of A with H with the Hamiltonian. Let us find out what is that because we are going to use it in, 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 in uh, our solving problems. So an important relation like the Hamiltonian on the operator A with H cap right so i will be equal to a right and what is h cape and a bigger is plus one over two right when you apply the commutator relation we have done this formula right when we write the commutator relation this, when we expand this line, we get what? We get something like A data, right? A and to A plus A and to A data. Right? So A is commuting with itself, right? So this goes to zero. And A A bigger, right? That is equal to what we have done this. We did it, right? In a little while ago, uh, I don't know which equation number was, but we said that this is equal to one. So that is equal to one. Okay. So the relationship between A and H cap, the commutator of A, the operator. And at the Hamiltonian is equal to A, right? So we should also note this. So let us write this in a special equation A, right? Similarly, the relation of the commutator of a bigger with H. Right? That is equal to minus a data. We will use, we, we should keep these two relations in our pocket. Because some, at some time we will need them and we will pull them out of our pocket and use it. So we should, we should remember this. the Hamiltonian and the operator A they do not commute. And the commutator is A itself. Right? 
here, the commutator of a dagger, this is not a, sorry, this is a dagger. The commutator of a dagger with h the hematonium, the cap hematonium, is equal to minus a. This should be should, uh, we should remember the, uh, the use Excuse of me, sir. Yes? What actually this a and a dagger operator represents? Okay, we are going to do it. We, we have okay. we have seen this. If you know, we, when we started it, we said let us split the Hamiltonian into two factors. If you remember, okay. Sir. If you yes, sir. if you remember, we said in the start, let us split the Hamiltonian into two factors, and one yes, factor sir. was named A with plus IP, and the other factor yes, was sir, named. But a star or a dagger with minus IP. Now these are these. Yes. Sir. Now what interesting action is are they going to do? We are going to see what interesting result we get. Okay. So let us apply the Hamiltonian at in energy basis. Suppose let us apply the Hamiltonian in energy basis, right? Where there are kicks like this. And this basis, it basis this basis consists of kicks E with eigenvalue. Suppose epsilon. Epsilon is the eigenvalue and this is the kit which forms the basis of the energy basis, right? But remember, you have to learn by heart chapter number one. Learn by heart chapter number one, that is very important. So, when we use this H in the energy basis, <coughs> we can say H, X on the kit epsilon and gives you some eigenvalue epsilon with the same pitch. This is the Hamiltonian applying on a kit in the energy basis, right? And <coughs> giving you an energy epsilon and the same kit. So that is called the eigenvalue push. Right? Suppose we have another state. We have another state. You know, what is this state? Suppose we have another state. A operates, suppose A operates on this pitch. And we get another state, which is this. So let us apply to this state the Hamiltonian. You know, let us write this equation in the form of a new state, a new kit. Right? So what happens? Right? Okay. So what is H A? H A, these are two operators. We say A is an operator which is which consists of some constant times X plus iota divided by some constant times P. A is A. Right? So what is this? Like this, these are now two, the product of two operators. What is the product of the two operators? We know that A. No, we are using this now. This AH, we know that AH is equal to AH minus HA. Right? So HA from here, HA from here will be equal to AH, and remember, I should use this cap on it. I should be using this cap on it.
So edge A from here will be equal to A edge minus A edge, right? So we have this thing. Now we can slide here, this in the form of this. Uh, this equation put H A for it. So So here, the question A can now be written as right, x cap A and to epsilon, right? I write it like that. A H is thing A H minus A H minus a and commutator, just put this here, right? And epsilon, right? Or I say A and cap epsilon minus A and epsilon, the commutator of that, right? So, therefore, I can write this equation like that. A and and to epsilon for this thing, I write this minus A H epsilon, right, is equal to epsilon and to epsilon k. Right? Okay. We said in that equation, we said A H was equal to A, if you remember. So here it will be A H epsilon minus A right and epsilon right is equal to epsilon and epsilon H. Right? Okay. Let's show more. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. A, H to H, same. Okay. So, A, and what is H, E? From a question just we did. The eigenvalue equation, if we will be uh, selected, uh, the applying H in the energy base, we said H E cat is equal to epsilon into E. So I am putting that value here epsilon into E cat here minus A into epsilon is equal to epsilon into bit. Right? So now I can say epsilon 
minus one common from here. Sorry, a common from here. A and two epsilon fit common from these two epsilon minus one. Right? That is equal to let's see the Badal Rakautu, right? From here, we started from here. So we said this thing is started from here. We took this path, right? So instead of this, this was wrong, but mother told it was wrong. It was wrong. This thing, I wrote it here. This thing, wrote it here. It is equal to H A. And to answer. Right? So this is common like this H A and to answer. Right? This is equal to something like this. Okay, let me write it there. What we did? We, we were checking this, if you remember. We said, let us check this, what happens. So we got here at a after all kit. We said, well, what happens if we apply? If you remember, I wrote it like this. If we apply this at to a uh, epsilon kit, what happens? So we get what? We get this thing. Epsilon minus one and two a. So look, it seems like this is the state on which the Hamiltonian is working. Giving us this eigenvalue and the set. This is an eigenvalue equation in which the eigenvalue is upside down from this one. If we apply, you know, the, the, the first equation that we started when we discussed the action of H in energy basis, we said. H working on E cat is equal to epsilon and to E cat, where the eigenvalue was epsilon and the kits were E. Now here, if we apply the Hamiltonian to this thing, we again get this thing, the same thing, but with an eigenvalue epsilon minus one. An eigenvalue that is smaller from epsilon by h cut omega. We remember we said we will use this, we will count this cap and the value of h cut omega. So it means that this operator generating a new state which has an eigenvalue smaller than the first by h cut omega. I am calling this H cut omega, this one. R, R small by less than one unit. And remember, the unit is that of H cut omega. So we call this, you know, the initial, the, the, the eigenvalue of this E was this. 
And the eigenvalue of this state, if I apply h to that, the eigenvalue comes to be epsilon minus one. So this acting on this gives you a state with lower energy. When this acts on the, the state, it gives you a new state, a new state with energy less than the original by one. So we call this a lowering operator. It gives, it, could, it is a generator. So A, the operator A can be called as a generator which can generate new states. It's like a generator. It is like a photocopier machine. It is like a photocopier machine. It gives you more copies, or, or, but, you know, not the original copies. They, it will give you new, lower. It, it, like removing one brick, removing one brick from the wall. This is an operator which is destroying the wall, you can see. That it lowers the height of the wall by one brick, removing brick one by one, one by one. So this thing is A is called lowering operator. Remember, what is the nature of A? It is a combination of two parts in which one is real and another is imaginary. So it is a combination of X, the real part, plus imaginary, the momentum part. That is the nature of A. What is its action? It's a very useful tool. You, once you get the energy or once you get a state, to the states, all the states below it, you give it only one state and it will generate all the lower states. So therefore, this A is called a lowering operator. Right? So what is what we call it now? A. What is the name of A now? T. Lowering operator. The name of A is now lowering operator. Right? Now, what happens if we do the same thing with a dagger plus? What does it do? Right? What is this? If we apply the Hamiltonian to a dagger, this is a new state, suppose. You apply the dagger to the epsilon and then apply this, right? What happens? When you do the same process that we did with a, and we got this equation, that it is giving you a new state. It produces a new state with a lower energy. This A produces a new state A epsilon, which has an energy low less from the original one, from the original one by an amount equal to one. Right? So when we apply this to the situation, right? I'm not going to calculate it. So it gives us a plus one when you repeat the same procedure with this situation, you get this thing and to a plus. So 
Seems like this is producing a new state from this, which is this thing, and whose energy is higher by one unit. So we call this raising upper because for this is for the harmonic oscillator case. We have two tools. If we know any state of the harmonic oscillator, we can find a state below it and we can find a state above it. We just only need one and all the other states will be generated by applying A and A. Right? So this is, suppose now, question number Right? And a dagger, this is called raising operator. Raising operator. There is no ring operator A, and that is raising. It's like a ladder, you know, under parallel. It's like a ladder. You can go up the rung by one unit, and you can come down. If you want to go up the ladder, apply the raising operator. If you want to come down the ladder of the harmonic oscillator states, use the lowering operator. Right? Okay. So, from equation 10, we can say that A actually generates a new state. Right? We say A applies. And it generates a new state. So we said that new state is epsilon minus what? It generates a new state with energy epsilon minus one, right? And that is the uh, eigenvalue of the Hummer Julian. But what is what does here this constant? We don't know yet that constant, right? We said if there is a if there is a constant, some constant. In the energy basis, right? Are related to the energy epsilon minus one. We said let this act on this, giving us another new state with some constant multiplied. Right? Similarly, we say a data is applied. A dagger, that is the raising of it. Suppose it acts on it, gives us the new state. A plus one. Right? And with some constant, and we said let the constant is related with epsilon plus one. So suffix as epsilon plus one. Then this is the question number. You know, what is the function of this? It lowers the energy of the oscillator. It gives you a new state with an energy smaller than the original. This gives you a new state with an energy higher than the original one. Now, an important point. If you remember, in the very first day, probably when we were starting with the harmonic oscillator problem, we said, 
the energy of a harmonic quantum oscillator cannot be negative. If you remember, we, we had concluded that in unprobable in the very first thing. It cannot be negative. So this is lowering the energy, but it has to stop at some point. The process, this machine is going to stop at some point. जीरो से नीचे हमारे पास एनर्जी पॉसिबल ही नहीं है क्वांटम हार्मोनिक सो ये लोअरिंग दिस लोअरिंग मशीन शुड स्टॉप एट सम मिनिमम एनर्जी एट सम मिनिमम एनर्जी इट शुड स्टॉप वर्किंग बिकॉज वी डोंट वांट एन एनर्जी दैट इज नेगेटिव इट इज नॉट अलाउड इन द हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर प्रोसेस क्वांटम हार्मोनिक ऑसिलेटर राइट so we said let the lowest energy the lowest the state with lowest energy is epsilon naught right epsilon naught is the lowest state with lowest possible n With the lowest possible energy, let that be the state. That is the lowest possible energy for the harmonic oscillator. So what will happen? It should be equal to the lower possible head. If we again on a ko apply karenge, what should you get? Zero. You should get zero. You should get like you don't can go be below that. You can go to negative. So if you apply this on the lowest possible speed, it should give you zero. The lowest possible positive energy state. If you apply A to it, you should be getting zero. It should stop there. So the not it is stopped. You get zero, and if you apply a again to zero, well, you you get nothing. You cannot apply a to zero because zero is zero, and if you apply a to zero, you get zero. So it means the the process is finished here. The process of lowering is finished here, right? If I apply a dagger to this thing, right? The raising operator, it should again be equal to zero because anything that is multiplied with zero is zero, right? So we know that uh, a bigger a and absolute not, right? That will be equal to n minus one over two n. If you remember, this was the, the, the relationship between uh, the, the Hamiltonian and the later operator. This it was equal to this thing. If you remember, and I said you keep this in your pocket. We will be using it. So this and this, thing, right? Is equal to zero. Right? Okay. This is equal to zero. I would say catch absolute. Minus one over two, absolute not is equal to zero. Right? And I can say h absolute not is equal to one over two absolute not. Right? So this is now an eigenvalue equation. The ideal value of this Hamiltonian corresponding to this state is one over two, and this is true, right? 
because if you remember we said the smallest value of the energy of harmonic oscillator quantum harmonic oscillator that was h cut omega divided by 2 and we say remember i am always forgetting this is h cap this is h cap this is h cap and h cap is a hamiltonian which is measured in the units of h cut omega so the eigen value is 1 over 2 So the eigen value is h cut omega divided by two, and we know that that is the smallest possible energy state. So we are on the right path, right? So we will say if uh, if We have like eigen value equation h e is equal to e naught e if e naught is the ground state at the lowest possible state energy, then e naught is equal to one over two, right? The lowest possible energy of quantum harmonic oscillator is equal to one, and remember. It is in the units of h cut omega. Okay. Now, this is the lowest possible state with energy one over two. Now you can apply the raising operator and go. Go higher, higher, higher by one point. You apply it once, the raising operator. Then you will get the energy one over two plus one. Then you got you apply it again, the raising operator a dagger, and you will get one over two plus two. Then you apply it again, the raising operator on that. You will get a higher energy one over two plus. So by applying higher and higher, it is indefinite. There is no bound on the higher energies, there, right? So the only if you apply the raising operator n times, so you get the energy, and that will be like n plus one over two, where n is equal to. Zero, one, two, three, and so on. It's an integer. So that is the energy of the quantum oscillator at any level n. Right? Look, there was the energy in the each cap passes. Uh, the energy of this. To a Hamiltonian, we will apply this thing with h cut omega. So that will be n plus one over two minus h cut omega. The energy of the nth rung in the ladder of the harmonic oscillator states that is equal to one. So we, by this method, we found the lowest possible energy of the harmonic oscillator, and during the process, 
we also discovered two very interesting things. We call them raising the operator and lowering the operator. So the raising operator, if you apply it to any state, gives you a higher state. You, you just give me only one state and I will give you all the others with the help of the raising and the lowering of it. So they are very interesting. You don't have to find, you don't have to have to, to, to solve shooting the equation again and again for this. You don't have to do it every time. You just have raising and lowering operators. You just solve the problem only for once. You get a state. And then apply the raising and lowering operators and you get three band states. Right? So they are very interesting, of course. Now, the, if we want to find the Hamiltonian, the true Hamiltonian, the matrix for the Hamiltonian, you know, in, in, in advanced quantum mechanics, you will be using operators in matrices form. Right? So the Hamiltonian in matrix form, the nature of the Hamiltonian is energy. And we will find the matrix for the Hamiltonian in the energy basis. But since the Hamiltonian, it consists of uh, X and P, therefore we should first find what is the form of X and P and the energy. So by doing this, we write x and p in the form of a dagger and to a, because we know that it is related to the Hamiltonian and it was equal to h minus one over two, right? So we want to find uh, x and p in terms of uh, uh, in terms of a and a. Right? So from equation, from equation one and two, equation one, equation two and three, sorry, equation two and three. Equation two was giving you A in terms of X minus IP. And equation three was giving you A dagger in terms of X plus IP. So if we can add them together, we will get X. If we subtract one from the other, we will get P. So from equation two and three, right? You get X is equal to X touch two and omega one over two and a plus a day and p is equal to and cut no sorry this is i the iota right and omega x divided by 2 and a bigger minus right we call x in terms of a plus a bigger the raising operator and the lowering we got p in terms of a bigger and a Right? So, we want to find what is the eigenvalue of A and what is the eigenvalue of A taken. Right? From the past equation, if you remember, we said A from your past one, some equation probably was 11, 12, R. 11, 10, 7, 
it was like a and that is equal to we said some constant with epsilon value a, a minus one and a big as it applies on this is that if it's equal to some constant time that is related to the energy epsilon plus one right hmm? okay let me change a little bit these things we know that the energy is going in the form of integers the states are going up and down in the form of integer 1 over 2 plus 1 1 over 2 plus 3 1 over 2 plus 4 etc are n plus 1 over 2 we are energy equal to 0 1 over 2. let us represent these states by n चलें इसको n से क्यों नहीं represent करते हैं तब states जो कि कुछ भी नहीं बदलता सिर्फ n तब दिल होता है so let us represent this by n right so let me write this thing where n is equal to zero one two three four let me write this thing as a n is equal to c right n and n minus one and let me write this thing as a dagger and right is equal to c and n plus one and two so n plus one right let me write this as equation number 19 and this is equation number we just replaced e by n because we said they are changing in the shape of integers anyway so we just label them by integers so we are labeling the states by integers Right. So this is an equation in one space. We can write. We know that from chapter one that there exists another equation exactly like this in its conjugate space, in its dual space, in its adjoint space. So a similar equation exists in the other space. And that will be draw a dagger is equal to for this for equation 19. An equation like this exists in the other space. And it will be like n minus 1 here for this and c and and it should have a star because it's complex conjugate a joint of it. Right? So then we suppose equation number 21. Right? Now let us take the dot product, the scale product of equation number 19 and equation number 21. Let us take the scalar product of it, right? Scalar product. Of 19 and 21. Scalar product of this. So it will be like this. And a dagger, right? This is scalar product. And a and and right. And this will be equal to n minus 1, c and star. And uh the n and n minus one and of 
Okay. What is this? This Hegel. We know that. मैं अब कहता हूँ इसको अपने पाकिट में डालो हम तो बावक्त इस जरूरत हमारे काम है। So A A Hegel from there it was equal to x minus one over two. And since these are just numbers, just numbers, so they can come out. They are not, they are not uh, operators. So the a s star will become a square, right? So this will be equal to n minus one and to n minus one and to n square. So this is equal to one. So this will be equal to p n square, All right? Ah, uh, we can split this by this n and to n into n minus n and to one into n and this is equal to p n square, right? R and this applies on it, right? We said when H acts on H, right? So we get what? We said it gives you the energy, right? And plus one over two. That is the item value. This was epsilon, if you remember, it was epsilon plus one over two. But now we are replacing epsilon by numbers. So it is n plus one over two. Right? So I am putting this thing here. So what I did is equal to n square root square root of n. right we got the constant we got the constant we got we found the value we found that value this was the value that an operator a will act on n and this gives us we said c and n to n minus one if you remember we said it gives us this uh, uh here is an equation sign equality sign so if i put it here i will say a acting on n is equal to for c n i will write n square root of n minus one. Right? Let that is equation number twenty-two. Right? Similarly, Similarly, 
Similarly, if we apply the same procedure with the Dagger situation, right? So we get for the Dagger operator. A Dagger, right? We get for that is equal to n plus 1, right? n two n plus 1. That is question number 23. Right? Now, let us apply a data to this equation. Let us apply this to a data to this equation. So what we get a dagger into a into n. n is equal to right a dagger and to square root of n and then minus one. Right? This will be equal to square root of n and to a dagger and to n minus one. Now we know that right a dagger is a raising operator. It raises this state, it gives you a new state with a higher energy. So when a dagger acts on this, it will give us a new state. And that state will be one digit high. One digit high will be n. So it will be this thing. And then eigenvalue will be the same, n. Higher, one, one stage higher. If you go back and imagine, and so this is equal to n, n, right? So look, This is the eigenvalue equation. Eigenvalue equation for a bigger and a. This is the eigenvalue equation for a bigger. And what is the eigenvalue of a bigger in a? That is n, the number. The eigenvalue of a bigger in a is the number. Right? And the number by the number you know. What is that? So, since the eigenvalue of this a dagger in A is a number, we call this, we can call this a number operator. Number operator. It is an operator which produces numbers. So this is a number operator. Right? A. Let me call this since it produces number. Look, it applies on a state. In this case, two, two operators together they apply on a state. Gives you the same state, but with an eigenvalue that is a number. Therefore, let me call this as a number operator. N is equal to A dagger into A. Let me call it a number operator. It produces. Numbers. Right? And we know that the Hamiltonian was equal to A dagger A plus 1 over 2. Right? So I will put instead of A dagger A, this A. 
So the Hamiltonian in the new form will be equal to the number of operator plus This is the new form of the Hamiltonian. Right? In terms of the number of operator, which we, which is the product of the integral and So we can find the uh, Hamiltonian. Now we are turning towards the number space and space because all the states, all the vectors of the dimensions are made of integers. So this is an n-dimensional space because all the vectors are made of numbers. Number one, one is a separate vector. Two is a separate vector here. Three is a separate vector. All these numbers are now vectors in this uh, space, in this n-dimensional space for harmonic oscillation, right? So, Our basis will be now this thing. Basis vector, which is a basis vector in n dimensional space, right? And this is the space power for this. This is the space in which this operator can, this is the space in which this operator can, and similarly, the space in which x can act. So the number of the, the, the numbers, the number of states as a number of basis is the field. Uh, it is it is the space in which the Hamiltonian and the number of operators in taken, they can work, right? To find the matrix elements, let me let us do it uh, next time. How to find? The matrix elements of X matrix elements. Matrix elements of X T and we will find those matrices with the help of the number states. We got the space now. Humare paas ab space maujood hai. Hum ne sirf base operators ko istemal kar. So, let us do it next time. It's not very really difficult, but I am tired too. You would be probably. So, uh, let us do it. Let us do that next time. So so far so good. Any question? Any question? Somebody has. Okay. So if no, no sir. question, should no, we sir, should we stop here? Yes, sir. क्या आप खुद कर सकते हैं कि x और p और हमल्टोनियन के मैट्रिसेस फाइंड करें? Can you do that yourself? सर अगर आप कर ले तो वो बेहतर रहेगा। अगर मैं होमवर्क दे दूँ तो तो फिर तो करना पड़ेगा सर। चलिए आप कोशिश करें। कोशिश करें तो ये आता है। Okay, sir. Inshallah. If you know the previous thing, you can find it. It's not something new. If you can, you know, in the previous uh, work, how to, how to, to make matrices. So if you know that thing, you can do it here. It's not difficult if you know the previous. Thing. Anyway, so see you next time, and uh, hope you have a good day. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Okay.